Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I make videos all about personal finance, work, as well as work vlogs. Today we're going to be talking about cybersecurity versus software development. I feel like I got a few comments asking like how the transition was and stuff like that. So I figured I would invite a software engineer and then we're going to do like a versus. So I have a few topics ranging from like, you know, just interviews, background, and then as well as like our day to day. So do you want to like introduce yourself briefly? Yep. Hey guys, I'm a typical software engineer. Just graduated from college. Oh, it's been two years now. A year and a half. Oh, yeah. A year and a half. A year and a half, yeah. So we're just gonna go down this list that I have on my phone of like random things that we're gonna talk about. Yeah. But the first thing is college degree slash background, mm -hmm. maybe some like internship experience that we had. Yep. I went to the University of Maryland College Park and uh, I studied computer science and finance. So I most of my courses were focused on algorithm data structure. So it's very software engineer focused. It definitely piqued my interest taking those classes and uh, I enjoy programming. So I wanted to become more of a technical role, which is why I look at jobs that's, that were more technical. So I decided to go to a big tech company to pursue sweet. What about internships, the previous job yeah, experience? Uh, internships, so I had two previous internships. One was on campus. It was like a entry level coding role. You just pretty much have daily stand-up scrums. Finish a bunch of uh, full stack works. If, if those of you know, mostly front end though, since I was just starting off. The second internship I had was at a fintech company. I was finance major, which is why I was thinking like, hey, do I want to lean more towards the financial technical side or like more technology technology. So after that fintech experience, I feel like maybe starting off, I want to join like a bigger tech company. And by the way, we also made a video of, I think it was like advice that he has for getting into a big oh, software yeah. company. Yeah. So I can link that below. It was definitely an older video, so the production isn't as good as now on my channel, but definitely check that out. Um, there's some really good advice in there that he shared. And in my case, I was, I also graduated with my bachelor's, but I graduated with a degree in information science and technology. So. In my school, it was pretty different from computer science. We obviously didn't go as deep into like the algorithms and data structures, but we did take data structures and algorithms courses, um, just like the basic ones. Yeah, we mostly just did software development or uh, web application development. I mainly learned C Sharp. And by the time I graduated college, uh, I did have a few internships, or I did have one internship also at a FinTech company. And before that, I did some undergrad research with one of my professors and honestly nothing too big in terms of you know hardcore software development like some of his internships were i think that's kind of it i also yeah. got a certification in computer security and digital forensics that was part of my school's uh, certification program so it's not like like a globally recognized uh, certification but it definitely did help me get my foot in the door for a few cybersecurity roles I, I would say also in undergrad i was more focused on data science because uh, my school had a data science specialization i know you do cybersecurity, so we also had a track for cybersecurity, and they were more focused on pen testing and uh, all the network courses. I didn't take many of those because I was more data science focused. I still want to pivot potentially maybe more data science focused role because those are also very different from a typical suite. And then I guess going into like interview prep and then finding jobs, I guess I can kick off briefly about that. Mm -hmm. In terms of interview prep, when I graduated college, I attended the Grace Hopper celebration. I attended the Grace Hopper celebration, which I've talked about on this channel, and I also attended a virtual Grace Hopper that I can link below. I vlogged. Definitely not the same experience as in person, but honestly, that's just where a lot of girls that I know actually find jobs, especially if you're like computer science or STEM. Basically, I was not necessarily looking for cybersecurity, but I was also looking for like software development roles or anything that was like technical, but not not like program management, but also maybe like data science or data analytics or cybersecurity. Honestly, I was just looking for anything because I. I don't know, I didn't really have an area I was specifically trying to focus on. Yeah, I was just uh, interviewing with a bunch of companies and for the most part, the technical interviews I definitely didn't do as well as uh, compared to him. Mm -hmm. Your interview might be very different from a typical suite interview. Yeah, for sure. So if you're going to cybersecurity, you're not going to be doing like a technical interview per se, but I mean, I have had past internship 
interviews for cybersecurity roles where they straight up gave me like a quiz asking me like what port is HTTPS, like SMTP and stuff like that. Yeah. So you could expect something like that asking you what you would do if like some intruder got into the network and stuff like that. Mostly modeling or threat modeling. So don't expect like the coding, like you're not going to expect you to write like a JavaScript script to, you know, detect anomalies or something. For me, general software engineer. So it's pretty classic. You go through like the technical interviews and uh, my thoughts behind it were if you were going to be a software engineer, you probably will start off with generalized software engineer and then you can talk about your interest and then sometimes they do care and then they potentially match you with a team that have your strength. So for me, the interview process where you apply online and then recruiter reach out to you, you have first round like Nico or like hacker rank link where they send you like a coding problem. You just do it yourself. And then you have the phone interview and then if you pass the phone interview, they will invite you on site and then you go through like back to back four to five interviews and then yeah, that's pretty much it. Most all of them are technical and uh, they will ask you based on the courses you have taken. I mean, sometimes they ask you harder algorithm questions. It really depends on the recruiter and interviewer, but yeah, pretty typical steps. So how did you prepare for your interview? Because in my case, I, I didn't really. Like there's not that much interview prep for cybersecurity. Yeah. So if you went to my school, we actually have many courses that could help you. For example, like advanced algorithm, like higher level data structure. And of course the green book. I also scanned mm -hmm. through the green book. If you know, that's how I know you're you in software know. engineer. But yeah, attending coding competition, hackathons, even doing some legal questions will definitely prepare you as well. I, I hear good things about those. Okay, so going into on the job, already working your day-to-day -day stuff. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of skills, tools, or like coding libraries ah, do you Ah, that's the fun one. Oh, Maybe you start off? Yeah, you start. Yeah, I can start off. So for me, I'm currently working closely with full stack. We use Angular and uh, Java. It's a pretty classic combo. Yeah, so Angular for front, and then you will write a bunch of code there, and then you go through like a services, APIs to reach your backend server, which is coded in Java. Yeah, that's pretty much my work day to day. And personally, back in college, like I wasn't really a fan of Java. Like I didn't use it as much. I was mostly using R and uh, Python for my data science courses. It is very different from uh, Python, but I come to appreciate it. And uh, Angular is Angular is very structured. If you're coming from a React background, similar-ish, but not really. So. so for me, I actually don't really use too many tools nowadays. In my first rotation, I was working on a few network security applications, but those are all in C Sharp and ASP.NET. Definitely older technologies. Yeah, for the most part, I honestly don't use too many tools. Um, I do have scripts that I follow, but most of the tools that I use are internal. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're not necessarily things that you guys would know, but I mean the common pen testing ones would be like Burp Suite, Remina, Metasploit, which you guys may or may not be familiar with, but those are probably the main ones I would say the ethical hacking teams use. Yeah, for the most part everything else is internal tools. Yeah, we use a lot of internal tools too, like a database or like the APIs, but yeah, your internal Java might be a little bit different, but not too, mm -hmm. too much. So the next thing is working with people versus individually on like a day-to-day -day basis or weekly. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, since I am on a pen testing or security team, most of my teammates and I work individually. So the only times I really talk to them are during our Monday calls and our Friday calls. We don't have a daily all hands or uh, stand-ups, but for the most part, our Monday calls are to catch up with each other on what happened the week before and following up on what's going on this week, just in terms mm -hmm. of our security assessments. And then our Friday calls are just wrap up. Uh, did everything go well? Did anything go wrong? Any assessments that just didn't happen or something? So we just keep everything, on, everyone up to date on there. And if I have anything serious, then I will reach out uh, individually to my team lead. But besides mm -hmm. that, all of my work is actually done individually. I'm actually surprised because I would think like for you guys, cybersecurity, you guys would talk a lot about like strategy and uh, vulnerabilities or like more oh, yeah. more team working per se like or working together yeah there's like group chats for that so we have like a channel where we talk um in terms of the whole team but so like if someone has a question they'll like reach out but mm -hmm. it's not really like a call i mean i also have like broader team calls where yeah. um i guess we meet up every wednesday and they go through like announcements from like the senior yeah. people but yeah besides that not really yeah i would say for us it's 
very similar. Like you get your assignment and then you individually work on that assignment. Of course, if you have a question, you can always reach out to your tech lead doing code review. And um, for my team in particular, we have daily standups, weekly meetings. So most of the time, it's just you working on your project alone. But of course, every now and then there's like weekly meetings or any talks that you might be interested in that you could sign up. On a day-to-day -day base, I would say like pretty much 80, 90% of the time, it's just me coding. <laughs> if you like that, it's fun. Like nowadays it's a lot easier because you, you're not in your office setting and you can actually focus, for me at least, you can focus a lot easier yeah so i guess for our roles we i mean i guess i do have like demo calls and report out calls where i have to mm -hmm. talk to like the app team and stuff but for the most part it's sounds like what we do is mostly individual i feel like unless you're in like a business analyst like strategy role you're most likely not going to be like working hands-on with people all the time unless you're like paired programming or you know yeah. partnered with someone or shadowing okay so the next thing is career trajectory it's kind of vague so yeah yeah <laughs> just free form uh i would say for me it's like you start off as general software engineer and then you get assigned on a team you're working on a product and it really depends on if you enjoy using the technology or you would rather work on something else the career trajectory is always based on like your performance, I would say. If you perform really well on your current team and then you get good ratings, you can definitely speed up the process of you getting promoted. Software engineer skills are pretty interchangeable, so if you do well in one field, you're more likely to either switch team or switch company and people want to hire software engineers. I, I feel like that's always like a role that's, that people are always hiring. The idea is to find something that you enjoy doing and if you enjoy doing it, you can improve very fast because you enjoy doing it so much. So I would say career trajectory, not too big of a deal. I guess in terms of cybersecurity, it's I feel like there's a lot more lateral moves <laughs> uh, when you're kind of progressing up in your career, I guess. I mean, I, I wouldn't know for sure since I'm only a year and a half in, but well, I'm also in a rotational program, so it, it does make it kind of weird since I switched teams. The last three years, I would have been on three different teams if I mm -hmm. go through with this. And I, I think it definitely has its perks and it's like not as good as because I mean, you probably know your team a lot better than mine because I've only been with each team for a year each. so. Because of that, there are things I don't know about that team. I just never got deep enough to sure. understand them. Sure. But I feel like in cybersecurity, there's so many different roles. You could do pen testing for a year or two, and then you can switch to threat intel or malware prevention or triage. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different teams that you can jump to, and they're not necessarily moving up in your career, but more so getting like a high level glance of everything um, in your company or in, across multiple companies if you're switching teams or switching uh, roles around. I feel like the people that I've seen who are, I guess, more senior in cybersecurity have been the type of people who have been on multiple different teams for multiple years. So yeah. they spend like three, four years in one area, get really good at it, and then they move to another area that they get really good at. And after a while, they have three, four areas that they just know super well. You know, that's when they get promoted to like an executive status or something. Um, potentially hire it, I don't know. So they can yeah. oversee more projects because they are already familiar with it. Yeah, for cybersecurity it's definitely about breath rather than yeah. like death in one area. Yeah, because you never know what the hacker is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, is it also like, I, I know a great thing about cybersecurity is that no one really values you, but when you fuck Until up, everyone happens. knows oh, yeah, yeah. about you guys. <laughs> like, they don't care what you have done, but if you fuck up, like, mess up, everyone's thinking like, come on, like, you just had one job. I know. Like, yeah. you want to talk a little bit about that? Because like, it's actually really hard. <laughs> so in my company, because our cybersecurity team is actually decently sized, but for the most part, no one cares about us or no one really thinks about us. They just see us like as the police until something happens, you know? Yeah. And for the most part, that means that we are not a profit generating team or organization in our company. Like we only take money, but we do <laughs> save the company money in terms of saving them from hacks, DDoS attacks, and like, you know, vulnerabilities and stuff mm -hmm. like that. If something goes wrong, that's when people actually start looking at us and say, well, what was the cybersecurity team doing? So yeah, that's kind of funny because we're always doing our job or like trying to do our job the best that we can. But if something bad did go wrong, that's when the bad PR comes. But no one, you know, praises you for wow, like, just you protecting, you know, like that. But I mean, yeah. there, there definitely are praises for that. I remember talking to people and I feel like in that area, it's sometimes it could be like harder to prove your impact and yeah. it's harder to get promoted if you just stick in on that team for a long time because you're doing an amazing job protecting it, but no one really can measure yeah, like how 
how good you are doing it. So like the, the reward system is not fair for these. For example, if you break something, okay, I'm not gonna even talk about that. All right, <laughs> no, I, I can't. Okay, so the next thing is stakeholder. So who are the people you have to make happy in your role? Like, do you have like- You started the last one or did I? I think I started a career trajectory, oh, so okay. you can start. Um, so in my role, my stakeholders are my manager, my team, so I have to make sure they know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then there's also each app application team. So I do four to five security assessments per week on an average week. For those teams, I have the project managers, the third party vendors, if they exist. Sometimes the remediation people that are on the team. So I basically have to make sure they get everything that they need from me to recreate any vulnerabilities that I find yeah. so they can resolve them. And that's kind of it, honestly. I mean, besides that, it's just my managers, maybe the other yeah. people on my team, but... I would say the most tangible ones are definitely like the same as you, like your managers, your tech lead, like your team. They are the closest contact that sees the result. But the intangible ones, like the, the users, you know, the consumers, people who are using oh, your okay. products, like, yeah, for us, we are product focused. So like they are technically the stakeholders who will be using our product, but we want to hold ourselves accountable and uh, keeping mm -hmm. ourselves at a high bar before we deliver our product. So like the project managers, like the UX teams, like everyone working together, trying to make sure everything is smooth. So then you have more client facing stakeholders, but yeah. mine are more so just- Internal, they, yeah, they just you, work you can for... share it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you are external facing, they're gonna be like, yo, tell us how to hack your system. <laughs> like, True. Yeah. Cause I mean, I guess like clients use the apps I'm testing, but okay. So the last one is a funner one, events. <laughs> but I feel like this is also more company based. Yeah. Um, like what kind of events do you have that you're excited for? You wanna go first? Uh oh. Um, so first last. Uh okay. So I guess for events, there are employee network groups that plan a bunch of different annual events as well as maybe quarterly events for networking. And nowadays it's all virtual. But one that I really liked was the Lunar New Year event this past year. It was in February, so yeah. before everything shut down. But yeah, that was definitely really nice. They like rented out this restaurant in Chinatown and we just ate food Ooh. and watched the show. Um, and I was volunteering for that one too. So Damn, that was crazy. a while ago, right? That yeah, was like before, weird. before like COVID and stuff. Yeah, it was in February, so yeah. literally a month before COVID. Yeah, I would say something same. Like we have our product area annual meeting summit, for example, like those are always fun to network with people outside your direct products and uh, any other events such as like conferences or talks that your company might host. Sometimes they invite guest speakers or like certain senior people who know something really well to give their talk and you can learn a bunch from them. So I would say that those are always fun events. So that's right. it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I hope that was helpful <laughs> to help you decide if you want to do cyber security or more general software engineer. Yeah, I mean they're both really good roles I feel yeah. like and I mean I might go yeah. back to that If you're not sure, you can always start general software engineer and then mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. switch to whichever product area that you are interested in Yeah, okay. I feel like software engineering is so broad that any job that you go into in tech, you're gonna be, it's gonna be a plus Like if you go into project management, cybersecurity, data science, like they're all gonna be impressed that you already know coding because you're gonna be able to talk to the developers So. Yeah, definitely a good skill to have. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you thank have you any other questions, let us know in the comments. Yep, and let us know. Uh, I'll try to answer them or he can answer them if you had any questions or if it's to him. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you want to see more views from me and us. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.